rest your head Cause tomorrow will rise Light the streets With a fire burning in our eyes Be your will Would you ride all oh, that's around successful uh, Premier Center for the Arts, and how you got down here to Milton, to this theater. So a family from Milton came to Middletown to see a show, and they were there with their kids, they saw the show, they were happy, and afterwards, the mother and the family, who happens to be Lisa Sunstein, who is the, the direct, executive director for the Chamber of Commerce, grabbed and she said, you have to come see this open theater, empty theater, and we want you to bring these programs down here. We met up about a month later, January last year, and uh, came here with some of our team, met the property owner, Lisa, some other prominent people from the town, and literally we were in the building minutes, and I looked at everyone and said, I don't know how, but we have to be a part of this. We were not in a position, we didn't have all this money in the bank and capital sitting there, we just knew that this was a project that was important to be a part of, and we signed on the bottom line, and, and it was just, we were, full tilt at that yeah. point. Now, I mean, this place is extremely striking as soon as you walk in and you see the theater, you can feel the history. But when you walked in here, this theater did not look the way it does today. <laughs> no. Tell me about the disrepair and the years that it had been dark in the town of Milton. Yeah. And what it took to get it back up and running. It was almost five years dark. And there was a nonprofit that took over the beginning, early 2000s. And they actually really did a great job renovating some big parts of the building. And they, they, they did a lot of the inside work, they gutted it. When we came, it had been a 100-year-old building that's been sitting here empty mm -hmm. for five years. So it was musty, it was damp, it, you know, it just, the systems hadn't even been on. There was no water, there was nothing. So we, what we realized very quickly was that there was a really good foundation, the physical part of it, and, and the setup was really good, that we just needed to scrub, clean, paint, rip out stuff, all the seating that they had, the old seating that was in here was traditional old theater seating mm -hmm. from out of the opera house in Wilmington. Yeah. And that all had to go, it, it was all just could not be saved. So we spent months, we started in about April and spent about three months, and June 7th of last year we were able to reopen it. But the, you said something that is, is striking to me and what hit us is when we walked in, there was a story, mm -hmm. there was this energy. I felt like I had walked into some really cool inner city theater that I just had like all these years of people have been on that stage and right. in that space and you could just kind of feel it all at once. Now how do you bring that back? Because this theater at one time was the central location of where people went to consume art and have a good time on the weekends. So in a town a small town in Delaware where the big claim to fame is the brewery down the yeah. street, Dogfish Head, of course. How do you revive the arts in an area where there has been very little arts and certainly not a central location for a, a theater, you know, up and running for years and years? Yeah. How did you do it? The thing that's amazing to me about this theater is there was a balcony in here and it seated almost 500 people for over, almost 100 years ago. This little tiny town had a theater that seated 500 people. And so all that history is here. 
that that purpose was already here. I felt like it was like a point in time that all of these things came together for a reason. The town, every person in the town <clears throat> got behind us, helped, they came out, they lent chairs, they were here scrubbing and painting. It, to me, the how has to do with the, the years and years and years of history that are there. Um, and then the people in the town really wanted it. They were so sad when this theater closed. They, they it really impacted this We talk this about town. all the pretty we try to get along. No snacks, we took the train tracks and walked all the way back home. We'll Fill them up till they're falling down in town full of freaks and rodeo clowns. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I said, oh, my, my. Oh, we. Don't you want me? The way it used to be. We're all little digging up. Well, the, the town was of Milton has been here for ages, and I wandered in. This area here was a cafe uh, with a counter where you would come and get lunch, like a luncheon counter. And I wandered in and had something to eat and realized that beyond the door there was something huge and that there was a theater because somewhere it, it indicated there was a theater. And I said, can I see it? And they said, oh, we never show that to anybody. Uh, and, but then they relented and they pulled the curtain back. And um, there is this wreck of a theater. I mean, it was a shipwreck of a theater. The, the uh, wooden seats were original and they were, uh, they had been wet. Uh, and, and, and they were all over the place. Some of them were in place, some of them weren't. And, but when I, looked, when I looked closely, I noticed the two frescoes on the side of the stage. And that was amazing. Yeah. And, 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 I, and, of course, I think the roof, th there, were big, there was big roof problems. And I think that there was, uh, curtains were hanging. It was a wreck. And I thought, but this is just a diamond in the rough. Mm -hmm. This could really be something. And now this. This is fabulous. Yeah. Talk about what the arts, or how the arts has sort of been resurrected right along with this theater here in Milton. Well, when I came to Milton, it was mainly, we, we were uh, there disparagingly called a farming, a farmer's town, and uh, that was all that was here. The fire company was the center of, and the fire company is wonderful, yeah. but that was the center of the world, and now we have this amazing theater with people who, who, can create and, and be creative spirits within this um, this community. I didn't even I could never even dream that it would be here, uh, but it is. Tell me about the programming that you enjoy coming to see here. Okay, well, it's funny because I used to live in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. but I saw my first drag show here. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and it was great. It was a lot of fun, and um, the comedy nights are really good, mm -hmm. and. The community cabaret has been great. I really enjoy it. it. It's a really cool thing because, you know, I play in theaters all over the place. And to come to a historic theater and have a essentially a community open mic night, you know, a community yeah, cabaret, right. where people throughout the community, from professionals to novice acts to kids, can come out and perform. It, I mean, does it make you feel like you're a part of the art scene? Not just that you're coming to shows, but by you're also performing, too. Yeah, I think Milton is an art city and it has an art scene. Um, one of the cabarets, there was a poet here who read, and my husband and I run a little writing group, and she was in it. Um, so it's, it is an art scene, and we're trying to foster it, and Fred's definitely trying to foster it, which is cool. This night is really interesting to me because this is a cabaret night. It's almost like it's an open mic night for the town. Yeah. People yes. that are professional musicians, people that are young kids who just like to perform. You put together this programming so everyone can feel like they're a part of the program. Yeah. Yeah. This is called Sound Thoughts. Station faults, pulling up anchors too quickly. Ka-clack, ka-clink, ka-clack. Last question, and I ask everyone that's 
doing the job that you're doing, trying to keep these theaters in these rural and coastal areas alive. You know, talk about the importance of the arts in the digital age, where everyone's looking at screens, yeah. everyone's looking at phones and looking on the internet. Where does the, or what is the value of consuming live performance? You, you will never replace that moment of live art where you feel something because of the energy that's in the room at that time. Mm -hmm. harmonica singing like muddy waters where did you hear that music when you when you were growing up well uh, my favorite band is the stones always and uh, I wanted to know who influenced the stones so I asked my dad and he showed me he showed me the muddy water CDs so I got on YouTube and uh, fell in love with harmonica and uh, started playing along with the old songs and that's how I got into it how long you been doing it I'd say five years, maybe. Not a lot of 13-year-old kids, not a lot of teenagers are playing Muddy Waters these days. Tell me what, how do kids your age react to it when they hear you play? Well, I went to an art school when I was uh, in middle school. And, um, you know, a lot of my friends played music. And I really wanted to be able to play with them. And uh, just, even just like, before I even started playing, I'm, um, uh, instrument with like a melody just jamming with a uh, maraca or or a drum with my friends it just felt it feels good <laughs> Thank you. That was a that was a song by uh, 